Uh, welcome to the studio at That Nerd Show. I'm Marcus Blake, and we're doing another virtual interview from the Naples Film Festival, and we are speaking with director uh, Lanny Zipway from the film Hello. The Subject. Uh, Lanny, great to have you here. Uh, just wanted to say I thought this was a very interesting film. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always kind of a huge fan of a film within a film. So mm -hmm. um, let's just dive in and uh, start talking about it. Uh, okay. How did you come to this uh, project? What, uh, what what led you here or to it? Yeah, well, thanks, Marcus. I'm happy to be here. And um, essentially, I knew the screenwriter, Chisa Hutchinson. We've known each other and we worked together in theater, so before film. And I've known her for over a decade, and that's how the script sort of came to me. And I'm so grateful. You know, that's the thing. You never know where your next project is going to come from or who's going to bring it to your door. So luckily I knew her and it had originally been a play that she wrote 10 years ago and oh. then adapted it into a movie at somebody else's suggestion. Okay. Um, so the first thing I kind of noticed is this, uh, you're dealing, there's a very interesting political undertone with it. It isn't just about, you know, two, these people dealing with tragedy uh, mm -hmm. because of what we are dealing with in our current society of, uh, you know, unarmed African Americans being shot by police and and stuff like that. Um, was that kind of the? I guess that wasn't really the intention. If this was originally written ten years ago, or did that kind of change as she adapted this to a screenplay? Well, I think these issues have are really at the forefront right now, but they've been going on for a long time. And so Chisa was writing to those even a decade ago. And when we made this film, we didn't make the film in 2020, obviously, because it takes time to get it right. out. But when we made it, we felt like it rang so true and that it had something to say about America's past, present, and hopefully future, you know, that we can start to have a little bit deeper dialogues and understanding around issues of Black Lives Matter and white supremacy and those sorts of things, but to tell it in a story that's really a story. It's not just like, oh, these are the issues we want to address, but they are actually full bodied characters that you get to watch their journey while they experience these issues. Obviously, there's a lot of ambiguity when you're dealing with a, the title of the subject and who the real <laughs> subject is, but I kind of looked at it as maybe a little bit of an indictment on documentary filmmakers. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful of the narrative that you choose, you know, that it can blow up in your face and what lines that you are willing to cross to tell that story. Um, is that... Was I correct on that? Is that kind of <laughs> something you were going with, uh, with Jason Biggs's character? Yeah, I think that that can definitely be one interpretation. And we love having debates and talks with other documentary filmmakers. I mean, I love documentary film, but I think the subject obviously has this question, like who holds the camera? Who gets to tell the story? How is the story told? I mean, I've even produced some documentaries and it's not always objective, it's sometimes subjective. And we wanted to look at these thorny issues because, you know, I think 2020 in a large context is having us all question the status quo, like how things have worked, right? Like it's, it's like minor issues that we can get to the specifics, but how do things work and do they serve us all? And I think that everything is open for discussion, including making documentary films. Right. Well, another interesting point is while he is, filming different, you know, subjects, and while he does ultimately become, you know, the subject himself, I, I wonder if you can, I wonder if you could say that really, you know, the filmmaker is always part of the subject because of the narrative they, they choose. You know, you're yeah. always, you're always going to have that uh, based off the choices. If you just 
put a camera out there and let the raw unedited footage happen, but documentaries are edited. And that's, exactly. so. Exactly, I mean, I worked on one and it was a very innocuous documentary. It was a feel good one. And the director's choice of music or the way to underscore something was going to, in my view, make fun of the characters. Right. And I just was like, why are we doing that? Like that, if the audience wants to laugh at them and what they were doing, that's one thing. But if we're telling them to laugh about it, that's a completely different thing. Like we have natural reactions to what we see or what we experience on screen, but right. how it's massaged or how it comes together, well, that's really the director and editor putting yeah. that footage together in that way. Yeah, so many times when we, uh, we talk about, we review films and most of them are, you know, they're not documentaries. Our biggest complaint, we always have, the two biggest complaints always come to how it was edited and the pacing of the film. Mm -hmm. And like, you can have this really great, you know, story and it's just horrible because of the way it was edited. Or, and then of course, you know, you're always dealing with director's cuts. I think Ridley Scott <laughs> probably the biggest one out there. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, every film I'm gonna make is really four hours long and you should <laughs> just let me have that final cut because it'll tell them bigger story and then the studio is like, no, 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 it's got to be reduced. <laughs>
have to find how to console each other with your own pain, the shared pain of somebody you know that died tragically. Um, so that, like I said, very, very interesting. Uh, now, use of camera. Mm -hmm. When you do these camera shots, um, you have what I, kind of a, a grainy old style camera uh, per se when you do that. It's not really HD. Is that kind of a choice? Yeah, it was. I mean, for those shots, I mean, she, she had a consumer or, you know, there's a consumer camera that was used for it because the thought was that's what would be available. So we actually used in the making of the film, six cameras, four different types. So two of, of, okay. two of each of those, but we wanted it to be distinctive and look different than the rest of the film. Like that was important okay. to us. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, nice touch to that. I thought it was Thank a you. interesting metaphor. Okay. So we got one last question for you. Uh, because we are a nerd news outlet, mm -hmm. we always like to ask a very nerdy question to everybody sure. we interview. All right, we're gonna test your inner nerd here. If you could have a superpower or a weapon of choice from within the nerd universe to fight the forces of evil, mm. what would you choose? I think it would be, can it be a temporary power? I would think it would be oh, mind, co mind control. In a way, like I would want to in some way telepathically communicate and control what people are thinking. I love when directors give us that answer because it's always the thought in the back of the head is like, what can I get these people to do what I want them to do? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, I was thinking an election's coming up that too. So, you oh, know, like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, so, not, yeah, exactly. Not, not, just, not just for, um, for <laughs> filmmaking, but for life anyway. Right, nice. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was a great uh, film, um, very interesting. Uh, anxious to see what happens with it. <laughs>